your resume. It's an important selling tool for getting that job that you're currently looking for. However, it's not the end all or be all in accomplishing this important task. Now, I won't argue that it's important that your resume is well written. I would also agree that your odds of getting a job are greatly enhanced if your resume contains an impressive work history and all kinds of academic accolades. However, please realize that you're never going to get hired based solely on the contents of your resume. What ultimately decides whether you get the job or not is if you get an interview. Your resume just gets you a ticket to that important event. So to reiterate, the primary goal of your resume is to get an interview. It is the interview or series of interviews that will ultimately determine if you get the job. One interesting hiring statistic is that 40% of hiring decisions are based on whether the interviewer likes you. If they like you, they'll assume that you will fit in well with their corporate culture. So what are the critical elements of a well-written resume? In many resumes, the first section that is listed is the objectives section. Many resume experts recommend either omitting this section or making the job title of the position being offered your objective. Whatever you decide to do, don't state broad, vague objectives. Stay away from I phrases. Remember, employers are looking for you to fulfill their needs, not yours. So the bottom line is, if you don't know the specific job being offered, or if you don't want to state a specific job objective, leave the objective section out. Another controversial section that is commonly included as a second item in a resume is the summary profile section. This section is used to summarize career highlights, special skills, and accomplishments. There are many opinions regarding the value of the summary profile section. Some experts recommend eliminating this section from the resume altogether. The summary section can have significant impact if it contains a summary of specific skills that are related to the job you're applying for. Whatever you do, don't put in vague descriptors like fast learner, works well with others, self-starter, good communication skills, etc. The next section, and probably the most important, is the experience section. What most employers prefer in this section is a reverse chronological listing of your work experience. With this format, you list the company name followed by a short descriptor of its business. Below that, list the most recent position you held and the years you had worked there. Finally, describe in three or four sentences what you did there. Keep your descriptions clear and simple. Try to focus your descriptions toward items that would make you a good candidate for the job you're applying for. For example, if you have experience in both research and management and the position you are applying for is a research position, emphasize your research experience in your resume. If possible, use numbers, statistics, and percentages to describe what you've achieved in your previous positions in the experience section of your resume. You might also want to bold this quantitative proof of success so that it stands out. Remember, quantifying your success always trumps using vague and generalized statements. For example, who would you choose to interview? The person that increased overall sales by 50% or the person that significantly increased sales compared to the previous year? Avoid using a functional accomplishment format resume. With this format, your resume lists all the functions and accomplishments without relating them to particular jobs. The problem is that it doesn't associate your accomplishments within a context of when, where, and with what company. Using this format tells potential employers that you're probably trying to cover up something bad, such as job gaps or too many jobs in your work history. The next section listed in most resumes is the education section. In this part, put down a reverse chronological listing of your education. Also list the school and the city and state where it is located. Below that, list the degree or certificate that was earned and the date of its completion. 
If you received any high honor, such as graduating valedictorian in your class, list it under the degree earned. Most resume experts recommend against including a personal information section. Employers could care less about your hobbies or how many children you have. Oftentimes, divulging personal information may work against you. For example, if you list that you have several young children, the hiring authority may assume that you won't be as productive as someone that does not have these personal responsibilities. When you're applying for most business positions, references will add very little value to your resume. If you want to play it safe, you can always state references available upon request. There are various templates that you can use to create your resume that are available in newbusinesscreator.com and employerpro.com. If you're searching for a job position, employerpro.com is an excellent site to find a position in either a startup company or a new business. Obtaining a position in a new business venture has many potential advantages such as the potential to receive a significant equity position and major management title.